Hello, everyone. My name is Maggie Swanigan, and I'm going to be presenting about Marcus Agrippa. Uh, there's a lot that he did for Rome, but to just start out, uh, just so you know, his full name was actually Marcus uh, Vitsvanius Agrippa, but he didn't really want to be known at all by his second name, so he dropped it and pretty much was only known as Marcus Agrippa. Fun fact to get us started. So let's look at his early life here. So um, he was born either 63 or 64 BC. Uh, they're not sure which. Uh, he was also either born in uh, Erpino, Estria, or um, Assisium. So they're not again, sure which one he was born in, but it's one of those three, all three are pictured on the screen. Uh, beautiful places. He was born to Lucius Vipsanius Agrippa, uh, and he has two siblings, one brother and one sister. So they all grew up in the Italian countryside. So it gives the appearance that it was a really humble beginning and um, that their family was poor, but that would actually be inaccurate. Um, it's true to say that relatively this was a humble beginning. I mean, frankly, um, he didn't grow up in Rome and didn't come from a really super grand legacy or anything like that. Uh, but he was uh, rich enough to actually be sent to Rome to be educated. Um, and we're going to see a couple of really important effects from that. Um, so what I ended up doing for this presentation is I wanted you guys to be able to remember important things about Agrippa. So for each section, I created like a poem or like a stanza of rhymes that hopefully will help you remember who he is and what's important about him. So for this uh, early life section, it says, humble beginnings at the start, but from the countryside he did depart, to Rome he went to ensure his knowledge was cement. Um, so again, just important things to know in these little rhymes that hopefully stick in your head. So, um, Pretty much one of the most important things we can talk about for Agrippa is his friendship for the ages with um, Octavius. So we know that he, Octavius, becomes uh, Augustus, the first emperor of Rome. So super important friendship here. They were educated and um, went to school and built this friendship uh, together. They were the same age um, and grew really close uh, as they were taught. Um, obviously, we know that Julius Caesar had a clear connection with um, Octavius, but also clearly thought highly of Agrippa because he ends up sending both of them uh, to Apollonia uh, to be with the Macedonian legions and to be with them, to train up with them, to learn. Um, and that was in 45 BC. Obviously, we know in 44 BC was the assassination of Caesar which sets off a lot of um, sequence of events. First of all, um, Octavius ends up finding out uh, that he is was named as Caesar's um, legacy, that he would be the next um, to rule. So in response to that, you know, they head back to Rome and Octavius really quickly realizes he's gonna need help uh, and the help of legions and an army, so he entrusts Agrippa, his trusty friend, to begin to levy those troops to build those up. So, um, you know, right from the beginning, as they're rising to power, um, they're together, they're uh, specifically helping each other out. Um, so he also helps and gives um, Agrippa very specific command. So after the assassination of Caesar, obviously there was justice to be brought for those that betrayed him. Uh, and Agrippa was actually specifically assigned to prosecute Gaius Cassius Longinus, uh, which he did and brought him to justice, which um, was really important for that whole section of what they were going to do in the result of um, Caesar's assassination. He also joined the Tribune of Plebes, which led him to be able to join the Senate. <coughs> Excuse me. So in doing that, um, we begin to see him really form this political career as, as well as beginning to see the, the ties of what's going to be later his military career, which is going to be super influential and important um, as we see, you know, both of these men rising to power together um, and continually trusting one another. 
So the stanza for this is, met Octavius and a friendship began. Agrippa would always be the right-hand man. Learn and grew together, a friendship that wouldn't weather. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna look more specifically at his military career. So um, obviously there was a lot of conflicts and battles that had to be fought in the wake of Caesar's death and Octavius, um, you know, coming in and taking over and fulfilling that legacy. So specifically the war against um, Lucius Antonius and Fulvia um, back in 40 BC, Agrippa helped out a lot with that and um, was able to lead battles and fight with that to be able to capture um, Prusia at that time, which was very uh, integral in ending the conflict and securing Octavian's rule there. Uh, he also was named the um, urban praetor by uh, Octavian in Rome to be able to protect southern Italy against uh, Sextus Pompeius. So um, Sextus is coming against and actually invades uh, southern Italy, but Agrippa was able to go and approach him and force him to retreat, which is super important, was able to keep that area safe and protect Rome as his friend entrusted him to do. Uh, we also see that um, Sextus and uh, Antony um, both invade and again uh, Agrippa is able to lead and fight uh, to actually uh, retake um, Sipontum. So again super uh, important that that happened and a major victory for um, Agrippa and to show his military prowess and leadership uh, and to, again, just continually reinforce that trust that we see Octavian have in him. Um, because of this, uh, Octavian named him the governor of the um, Transalpine Gaul. And while he's there, he has a lot of victories as well in stopping uprising, uprisings and um, just really protecting that area. But while he's governor, Octavian actually um, suffers a couple of major defeats and so ends up calling his BFF Agrippa back and saying, hey, I want to name you, um, you know, for the consulship uh, back in 37 BC. And Agrippa does. He leaves being governor and comes back to Rome to assist and um, advise his his friend Octavian. He had even said that he wasn't going to celebrate any of the victories that he had while being um, governor because it wasn't right to celebrate while Octavian was suffering defeat. So we see again just this important friendship. We also begin to see Agrippa's um, uh, infrastructure ingenuity and um, brilliance there because while uh, he's serving in that position he actually uh, builds a safer and better harbor in the south of Italy. <coughs> Sorry, to um, you know, have larger ships to be safer to protect against something like Sextus happening again, and even getting a better grappling hook. He's a very smart dude. So the stanza for this says, "Trusted by Octavian to fight and lead, he was there for Italy in their time of need." became a governor for a time, their first friend at the drop of a dime. Uh, keeping those things in mind. So we're gonna look more specifically at, at the things that he did for Rome's infrastructure. So he was responsible for a lot of public works projects, uh, including public baths and um, gardens and patios. But those, um, although make up a lot of really awesome things that he did isn't really what he's known for. Um, later we're going to see why he did, but he commissioned the original Pantheon in Rome. That's why we can see in this picture uh, his name is is on the current Pantheon. We see M. Agrippa and uh, that, you know, remains and that shows his influence and importance uh, for the infrastructure in Rome. He also um, was able to build and expand and um, improve the aqueducts in Rome, specifically the um, Aqua Marcia, which was a very, very large, expansive, important 
aqueduct that he was able to work on. Uh, because of this, he was actually um, became the first water commissioner of Rome in 33 BC. He was also named um, the Aedil in 33 BC, uh, which meant that he was responsible for maintaining and managing public infrastructure, uh, which he did such an amazing job at and such a complete job at that that role that might have seemed like a downgrade but actually um, really respected. So the reason we have this city of marble is because we know um, and hear Augustus claiming that Agrippa took, uh, it, he had found a city of brick and left it a city of marble which is very high praise and obviously um, influential in the way that we know and imagine Rome to be now. So the stanza for this says, the Pantheon bears his name, his work to build brought him fame, turning eyes to look and marvel, city of brick to city of marble. So we're going to look at very specifically the Battle of Actium, which is super important to know and probably the most um, integral thing that uh, Agrippa was a part of. So we know that Antony and Cleopatra were pretty much the last things in the way for Octavian to finally secure being emperor of Rome and secure that land and area. So when this conflict was beginning, um, the battle actium was soon to start and Agrippa very quickly made his way there, uh, even capturing important cities on the way and um, doing very influential, successful things before he made it to the battle. When he gets there, he's able to talk to Octavian. Be an, it's another instance of him giving great advice and counsel and leadership to him in discussing how the battle should go, what he should do even before the battle. Um, that was integral for the battle on September 2nd in 31 BC. We see this battle happen and a huge victory for Octavian. Um, we know that subsequently Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide and this secured uh, Octavian's rule as emperor, um, which cannot, the importance of that can't be overstated, that this battle was a huge turning point. But even more specifically than that for Agrippa, this battle could not have been won without him. He was integral completely to the victory of this in the leading of troops, in the working um, out how this was run and how this would be fought. So, you know, by understanding that, we see how important Agrippa was to his friend Octavius becoming Augustus, becoming emperor, um, and securing Rome as, you know, it became and was known. So, for this battle, we see Antony and Cleopatra stood in the way. Agrippa went to Actium without delay. On the sea, a battle was fought. The victory and emperor was got. So, um, looking at that, we're going to move on just to discuss his legacy and a few other things to know about him. So, he, in addition to being a military genius and doing a lot of things for him, including, you know, all the things he built, uh, he also was into geography and he brought about uh, the fruition of one of Julius Caesar's dreams, which was to have a survey of the empire. Um, and Agrippa was capable and <laughs> willing to actually do that. So um, that's what this map is, is sort of what Agrippa did in surveying the geographical landscape of Rome, which is super important in understanding what Rome was like at the time. So ultimately though, why Agrippa is important and what legacy he leaves, is he was the brawn to the brain of one of the most influential friendships in history. Uh, he was the athletic, um, brawny, strong, active man um, behind the brilliant strategic leader of Augustus. Um, he fought and led and won very important integral battles that secured the first emperor. And again, the significance of that is huge and lasting. And we know that what we understand Rome as today would not have happened without Augustus and therefore with, not without Agrippa. Um, this friendship um, 
all attested and things happening within it, uh, we see how many effects come from it um, and the importance of the things that Grippa did um, for the landscape of Rome, uh, geographically for the infrastructure of Rome, um, and for the building up of a very, very important figure within it. He ended up dying in 50, uh, or in 12 BC at the age of 52. He had had three wives in his lifetime and at least seven kids. Um, he is hugely, again, important to what Rome became and the man behind the first emperor. So thank you for watching and I hope you learned a lot. Uh, this last stanza just before you go is uh, Friendship for the Ages, Rome Secured in History's Pages, A City of Marble Built to Last, Agrippa's Legacy Deep and Fast. So uh, with that, I leave you and thank you so much for watching.